lover of my soul Jesus I will never let you go You've taken me from the mighty clay You set my feet upon the rock Now I know I love you I need you You're my walk at fault I'll never let you go My Savior My closest friend I will worship you Until the very end Jesus Lover of my soul says to us, I just want to welcome us with the passage out of Psalms chapter 24, verse 7. It says, lift up your heads, all you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. So this morning, as we lift up our hands during this time of worship, I want you to know that you are a gate. You are an access point. And the Lord wants to come through. He wants to show up in your situation. He wants to show up in your family. He wants to show up in your home. He wants to show up in your business. I believe he wants to show up in our city and in our nation. And the Bible says that the access points that God uses to show up and do great works is you and I. So we need to open the gates. We need to open the gates of our hearts, open the gates of our spirits, and get ready to worship the Lord this morning. It says, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. So it says the Lord strong and mighty. He is a strong and a mighty God. So if you need God to show up, in, in a strong and a mighty way in your life. I want you to get ready to open your hearts in, a, in this time of worship because he wants to come through those gates, the gates of your mouth, the gates of your heart, to come through and show himself strong and show himself mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. That means he wants to fight on your behalf as we worship him this morning. He says, lift up your heads, O you gates, and lift them up, you everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. 
And then it says, who is the king of glory? Verse 10. And the Lord, the Lord of hosts, he is the king of glory. He is the Lord of hosts. Hosts meaning the angels that are out there. And the Bible says he has given his angels charge over you to hold you up in your hands in in their hands lest you should dash your feet against the stone so it doesn't matter if you've been feeling like you're standing in a precarious place feeling like the right you know the the, the ground's just been taken from under your feet you may have feel you may be going through a sense of instability and saying god i need you to hold me up i need you to 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 to, to hold my hand during this time he is the lord of hosts and let me just say this i believe he's releasing his angels and those who are with us are more than those who are against us. It doesn't matter who's uh, out to get you, who's against you, who's standing uh, uh, contrary to you. Let me just say this. Those who are with us are more than those who are against us. So let's just lift up our hands right now and ask God to cleanse us and to purify us. If you've had anybody upset you this week, if, you've have, if you have any offense in your heart, if there's anything that, that you may feel in your heart that, that, that you're not happy about, why don't you give it to God? right now is there's people that you need to forgive just forgive them right now release them right now jesus we thank you for your presence we ask you to come lord we ask you to cleanse us we ask you to purify us with your precious blood sanctify our hearts sanctify our minds sanctify our lips speak to us this morning we forgive, we release those who, who have ought against us. And as we forgive and release them, we thank you that you forgive us and you cleanse us from all unrighteousness and from all sin. And Lord, we come boldly even to the throne of grace that we may obtain grace and find help in time of need. So Father, even as we come before you in your presence right now, we thank you that your precious blood is covering all the homes right now where this broadcast is going. We thank you that your precious blood is going through this screen that you're touching your people that you're sanctifying them you're cleansing them you're purifying them with your precious blood we thank you father have your way this morning as we worship you as we glorify your name as we come into your presence have your way lord jesus thank you holy spirit Thank you, Holy Spirit. Why don't you just lift up your hands at home right now and just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Father, we worship you. We worship you, Lord. Father, we welcome your presence. We welcome your presence. We welcome your presence. Let yokes be broken. Chains be broken this morning. Let your fire fall in this place in the name of Jesus, where our people are worshiping you, where they're lifting up holy hands, let the angels right now begin to join them in this time of worship. Let your glory, your presence begin to fall. Lord, we know there is no distance in the spirit. We welcome your presence. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Let the Shekinah glory of God fill this place. Let it fill every home and everywhere people are gathered, where people are praying, worshiping you in their lounge rooms, in their bedrooms thank you father god in their cars as they drive let your glory just fill that place in the mighty name of jesus thank you holy spirit have your way 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 let's worship the lord
Monday this week, I wrote some notes down. I was thinking about the sunset, that the sunrise, I mean, sorry. I just thought how amazing a sunrise is. And we've seen so many beautiful ones lately. And I was thinking about what music would sound. And I know that music and sound is what the Lord created. And I just wrote down these words. And then I thought, well, I want to share them. And I wanted to play like there's a sunrise happening. So I just ask you to just rest in the Lord and just wait a few minutes. And just picture a fresh new sunrise.
joy comes in the morning Streaming light into the darkness Chasing the shadows And filling us with sin Now is the time
and me with you. It's been a while, but my heart cried again to worship you, I live to worship you, I live, I live to worship you. worship you, I live, to worship you, I live, I live, to worship you, to worship you one more time, to worship you, I live, to worship you, I live, I live, to worship you. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live, I live. To worship you. To worship you. Oh, to worship you, I live.
Father, we worship you, we worship you, we worship you. We exalt you, Lord, this morning. Have your way, Lord. Have your way this morning, Lord. We praise you, we magnify your name. We exalt you, Lord, this morning. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. We thank you for your holy presence that is even moving in this place right now, moving in the homes where people are connecting with us all over the world. Father, I pray, let your blessing be upon them this morning. Let your healing presence flow right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray for miracles to begin a breakout. We pray for signs and wonders to begin a breakout even as people watch this broadcast, Father God, as they continue to connect with us online, Father, we thank you there is no distance in the Spirit. And we pray, Father, for miracles and healings this morning. I want you to just lay hands on yourself this morning. If you're sick in your body, if you've got a need, something that you're believing God for, why don't you right now just release your faith for that, whatever it is that you're believing God for. And if you need a healing touch, believe God right now. And we're going to trust the Lord to, 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 to intervene even at this time. Father, we just thank you right now. Let your presence, let your glory right now begin to flow. Let your power begin to flow right now. Father, we thank you for healings and miracles and interventions that are taking place. Breakthroughs that are taking place right now. Father, we thank you for what you're releasing and what you're pouring out. What you're pouring out, even in the homes right now. You know, in the spirit, I'm seeing somebody, I see somebody with a, with a, with a folder, like a file. 
and and a, it's some sort of a pre proposal or some sort of a business thing that you've got in that file and, and you're praying you're bringing it before the lord it's almost like a plan or a vision a proposal that you've written and the lord i just see the hand of god over that proposal right now over that file god will bless it god will cause his light to shine upon that proposal god will, will order your step he will go before you he will give you favor he will give you favor as far as that proposal is concerned, that vision that you have written down is concerned, God will give you favor with it. And I see it come in the past. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father God. We thank you for the proposals and the, and the files, that particular file that, that is being released. Thank you, Father, for your anointed that is being poured out right now. The glory of God that is being released right now for breakthroughs even in this place and at this time. And I feel like, like, like somebody like John, God is going to begin to visit with you. God is going to begin to visit with you in regards to this. The spirit of the living God is falling upon you right now even as I release this word. God is touching you. God is releasing his grace in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, let's keep praising. Just keep worshiping Him. Right there at home, lift up your hands before the Lord. We thank you, Lord. Speak to us. We, I'm just seeing miracles. I'm seeing healings right now being released. There's healings being released all through the place. Father, we rebuke sickness and disease right now. There's somebody who's believing God for healing, not for themselves, but I see for your mother who's not with you. There's a mother that you're believing God for, for, for he healing for. I thank you, Father, that you're touching that wonderful saint, that wonderful lady, that you're touching her right where she is in the mighty name of Jesus. There has been anxiety in your heart this week about it. But the Lord is moving right now and bringing wholeness and healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that you're breaking yokes and bondages. That it's going to be a good report coming back uh, of healing and restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your healing presence. Thank you, Father, for restoration that is being poured out right now. Thank you, Father God. Restoration. I see the Lord anointing pens. It's like people, there's an anointing for writing that God is pouring out right now. I don't know who's, who, who, to whom this word is for, but, but there's somebody specifically. The Lord's been putting it on your heart to begin to write journals. I see journaling. You're writing journals. God is speaking to you. Pick up your pen and begin to write what the Lord is showing you. I see poems and I see dreams that the Lord's going to begin to give you. And he wants you to begin to keep a written record of what he shows you. Because it's not just for you, but it's for the, for the people of God. And it's for those who God will send it to. I see like the Lord is releasing. There's an anointing for writing that the Lord is pouring out even right now. In the name of Jesus. During this time, there's been things that God has been depositing in your spirit. Just begin a journal. Begin to write those things down. Begin to put them on pen and paper. And I see God causing fire to come upon what is being written. It's going to be like prophetic, 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 prophetic. There's going to be a prophetic anointing in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you, Lord, for your glory. Those who are believing God for financial intervention and for God to come through. I know it's been, it's, it's a difficult season for many, but I pray in the name of Jesus, Father, that you will preserve your inheritance. You will preserve your people during this storm in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your grace. There's somebody being healed. Their back, spinal cord, pain is leaving now in the mighty name of Jesus. I see arthritis in somebody's hand being healed as well. Just believe God right now. Just stretch out your hands and begin to move your, those parts of your bodies. I see somebody who's been, you've, this week, I don't know what happened, but you've been having a problem with your neck. There's been pain in your neck. If you would just take a deep breath right now, and just begin to move your neck. Healing is coming in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I rebuke that pain in the mighty name of Jesus. Healing is being released right now. 
just begin to move your neck around. You'll see the pain has gone. Why don't you just type it out, put it in the comment. Let us know what God is doing out there. If these prophetic words are relate to you, just receive them right now. Give us some feedback. Let us know what God is doing in the mighty name of Jesus. God is still working. He's doing a lot of stuff out there. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your power. Thank you for what you're pouring out even right now. In Jesus' mighty and holy name. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. While we're in this atmosphere of worship and praise, let's right now get ready to give. We're going to get ready to sow and to give our tithes and offerings. And we're going to have all that information on the screen right now. And, uh, and I'm trusting the Lord that even as we are faithful in honoring God with our giving, God is releasing something supernatural over your life. Father, I thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for those who are bringing their tithes and offerings and their gifts and they're coming to honor you. Father, they're not giving to a man. They give, we're bringing it to you. Just like the wise men who brought the, the gold, the frankincense and the myrrh and they came to see you in the manger. Father, we thank you as they brought their gifts as they were being led of the, of the Lord and being led by the star we thank you that that gift was able to finance Jesus to go all the way to Egypt that it may come to pass that out of Egypt I will call my son and as you give, we believe in God that your gift will reverberate through time and eternity. And may God credit into your heavenly account every soul that is blessed, every soul that is healed, every soul that is, that is saved through this broadcast. As we reach out to the four corners of the earth, we've got people that are connecting, people that are being blessed around the nations in New Zealand, in the Philippines, all throughout the nations of the earth. And as you give and partner with us we're trusting God that God will preserve you in this season and not just in this season but God will pour his spirit upon you even right now that the blessing of the Lord will be released over you so father we thank you that those of you those of the God's people who are giving online we thank you father God that that gift as we lift it up before you we are giving it Lord we thanks giving in our hearts with joy in our hearts and we thank you father god that as we sow we so believe in god that the needs will be met and as the needs are met let there be 12 basketful left over when the people are fed when the people are looked after let there be an overflow coming back to those who have given in jesus mighty and holy name amen and amen and amen and amen praise the lord praise the lord i've got a word from the lord that I'm going to bring this morning. And we've had such a wonderful time of worship in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, worship team. Let's just appreciate them on the comments there. They've done an awesome job taking us right into the presence of God. If you have your Bibles, I, I want us to look at a few chapters uh, this morning. Romans chapter 4. And uh, we're going to read a few verses out of Romans chapter 4. But also Hebrews uh, chapter 3. Let's start from Hebrews chapter 3. And um, I believe that this is the word of the Lord for this season and for this time. Hebrews chapter 3, if you have your Bibles. Uh, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1 to verse 6. The Bible says, Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and the high priest of our confession. Consider the apostle and the high priest of our confession, Jesus Christ, who was faithful to him, who appointed him, as Moses also was faithful in all his house. For this one has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who built, uh, he who built uh, uh, the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by someone, but, uh, by someone, but he who builds all things is God. And Moses indeed was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which will be spoken afterwards. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are if we hold fast to the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end father we thank you 
because you are the author and the finisher of our faith. We thank you, Father God, because you are the high priest of our confession. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Speak to us this morning. I want us to, I just want us to, uh, I want to speak for a few moments on the title, on the subject, hold fast to your confession. Hold fast to your confession. Hold fast to your confession. Over the years, um, I've been saved now nearly 30 years, serving the Lord for 30 years. And one of the things that the Lord has called me to do um, from the very first days when I gave my heart to, to, to the Lord, before I ever started preaching, before I ever did, uh, started doing crusades or traveling or any of that uh, sort of thing, uh, God called me uh, in the ministry of, of intercession, in the ministry of prayer. And I remember in those early days going before the Lord and really praying and, and um, every weekend I would lock myself away to pray and I would pray from morning right up to uh, night time. Many times, that was my custom. I remember many days uh, going before the Lord uh, after school, praying because I was in primary school in those days. I would pray all night till morning. And I remember after I would do that, I would go back to school and sometimes I'll get around my friends who are not saved and I'll get around people who were not Christians. Sometimes when my parents were driving and taking us to, the, uh, to school, you know, to drop us to school, you know, I would listen to my parents who were not saved at that time. And I would listen to things that they would say and things that, uh, comments that they would make. And, and, uh, and I found myself as a little boy beginning to absorb some of the comments and some of the things that were being said or were in the environment and repeating those things uh, that were being said. And you know, some of those things were fear-filled, uh, fear, they were just full of fear, uh, words and, and things that we were speaking about. Maybe if it was full flu season, it will start talking about, you know, be careful, you know, we might get, catch the flu and things like that. We began to have these expectations. And I remember one time in my time of prayer, while I was waiting on the Lord, the Lord showed me a vision of an empty container. And uh, I kept after, and this was after, after a time of prayer. I was just really interceding, really praying, going before the Lord. And I remember the Lord showing me an empty container. That he was carrying this empty container. And the container had my name on it, but it was empty. And I was wondering... As I was seeing Jesus carrying this container with, with my name on it, and I'm looking at the container, and I knew that the container was supposed to contain my request, my prayers, what I was praying and asking the Lord for, but the container was really empty. And even though I'd spent hours and hours and hours praying, I saw that the container was still empty, and Jesus was standing there waiting for the container to fill up so that he can go up to heaven. And I remember coming out of this vision as a, as a a little boy wondering what have I just seen what does this mean and then the Lord began to minister to me a few days later as I began to uh, wait on the Lord the Lord's always used me with dreams from the time I was 14 years old he came to me and he showed me in a vision and said to me very clearly he said Jimmy if you ever have any questions, I will speak to you in your dreams. And so I remember having a dream and the Lord spoke to me in the dream. And in the dream, he said to me, Jimmy, you are sowing in your prayers. You're praying, you're bringing all these requests and you're praying all these things. But you're nullifying your prayers with the words that are coming out of your mouth. You're nullifying your prayers with the confession that is coming out of your mouth the moment you walk out of your prayer room. And I realized that this is the problem that we as believers tend to have. We tend to nullify the effects of our prayers with the confessions that come out of our mouth the moment we walk out of our prayer room. You've got to understand that Jesus is the high priest of our confession. Now let me just speak a little bit just uh, to us about, to understand what the ministry of a high priest is. Now if you read your Bible, you notice in the Old Testament God anointed three offices. He anointed the office of the priest, he anointed the office of the king, and he anointed the office of the prophet. Now the priest, the job of the prophet, the prophet was God's spokesman. He went to the people on behalf of God. His job was to hear what the Lord was saying and echo back to the people 
or repeat back to the people what God said. That's why the prophets say, thus says the Lord. Their job was to hear from God and come to the people and say, this is what the Lord is saying. The job of the priest was different from the job of the prophet because the job of the, pro of the priest was to spend time with the people and hear what the people are saying, hear the prayers of the people, and he would go before God on behalf of the people. Because the people in those days could not go to the Holy of Holies. Only the high priest was able to go into the Holy of Holies. So the people will come with their prayer requests and they will come with their, 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 uh, their requests, their sacrifices and all the things that they would come to bring before the Lord and they would bring it and offer it and the priest would take the, the, the prayer requests and the things that they had and they would take it, you know, the sacrifices that they had made, they would take it before the Lord in the Holy of Holies behind the veil. They would go to present it before, before God. So the job of the priest was to receive the requests of the people and present the requests of the people to God. Now, one thing that the Lord spoke to me, he said to me, I am not the high priest um, of your prayers. I am not the high priest of your prayers. I am the high priest of your confession. Now, most of us think that Jesus goes before God to repeat our prayers. He doesn't go before God to repeat our prayers. He goes before God to repeat our confession. And so you've got to understand what God answers beyond prayers is confession. We can pray all we want, all we want. But the moment we walk out of our prayer room, if we do not continue to confess, if we don't confess, our prayers are nullified. We will not see answers coming from our prayers. So you've got to understand, it's not just about our prayers, it's about our confession. Now, the Bible tells us something here that's really remarkable. And I want us to understand this in Hebrews 3.1. It says, therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and the high priest of our confession, Jesus Christ, who was faithful to him who appointed him. Now, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. This is really powerful. Hebrews 4, 14. The Bible says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet was without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Now what we need to understand here, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14. Seeing then that we have a, high, a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. The Bible says he has passed through the heavens. The high priest of our confession. He has passed through the heavens. And that's a pl plural. Heavens. And we always know that there's three types of heavens. There's the first heaven which talks about the sun, the moon, the stars. The second heaven which is a spiritual dimension which is inhabited by the demonic. That's why the Bible talks to us about the spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. The book of Daniel speaks about the demons, the prince of pages that there was in the heavenlies that resisted the angels that tried to come through. They were in that particular spiritual atmosphere called the second heaven. God lives in the third heaven. And the Bible tells us that Jesus has passed through the heavens. He has passed through the heavens. And I believe he passes through the heavens because when he comes to our prayer meetings, he comes to hear not just what we are praying, but what we are confessing after we finish praying. We can't just pray for people to be saved and then walk out and talk about how difficult and how lost and how terrible these people are. We can't say we pray for the prime minister, then walk out and speak negative things about the prime minister. We can't say, we can't speak about the situation and or pray about the situation and then go out and speak something negative about the situation. Jesus is not the high priest of our prayers, he's the high priest of our confession. So you've got to understand what comes out of your mouth after you finish praying is what really begins to change the situation that begins to create or change the reality of where we are. So the Bible says, seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens. So he has received our prayers. He has received our confession and he passes through the heavens to go before the Father and listen to this. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession for we 
we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. Now, weaknesses is one of the reasons why we pray. We feel weak about this issue. We feel weak about that issue. It causes us to go before the Lord and it causes us to start to pray. It causes us to begin to ask God for strength. Lord, help me because I'm weak in this area. Help me because I'm struggling in that particular area. The Bible tells us that we have a high priest who can, um, it says, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. In other words, he feels our weaknesses. He knows our weaknesses. But even after we have prayed about our weaknesses, the Bible says we should hold fast to the confession of faith. The Bible says, and now let the weak say, I am strong. So we should hold fast to the confession of faith. Hold fast to the confession of faith. After you finish praying, hold fast to the confession of, pray, of, of faith. Don't start to speak weakness over your life anymore. Don't start to speak challenges over your life anymore. If you prayed for God to preserve you, to look after you in this season, when you walk out of your prayer room, begin to speak about how God's going to come through for you, that you're above and not beneath. You're the head and not the tail. You're blessed in the city, blessed in the field. Everything you touch is blessed. This is the day that the Lord Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is going to be what's coming out of your mouth. Jesus is the high priest of your confession. He's watching what you're confessing and he goes before God and he begins to bring the confession that you're, that's coming out of your mouth before the Lord. Now the Bible tells us in Jeremiah chapter 1 that he is watching over his word to perform it. So when we talk about confession, we're not just confessing what we want to confess. We're not just saying what any little thing that we want. No, it has to be in line with the word of God. Because Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12, it says that God speaks to Jeremiah and he says, what do you see? And he says, I see a ripe almond, a almond trees and he says, a ripe almond fruit. And he says, you've seen well, Jeremiah, for I am watching over my word to perform it. I'm watching over my word to perform it. He sent his word and he healed them of their disease. Didn't say send prayer, but he sent his word. The, 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 one of the centurions said to the Lord, he says, only say the word and my servant will be healed. He didn't say pray, but he said say the word. Because the moment you speak, things begin to change. The moment you make that confession, the moment you begin to say what the word of God says, I know things will begin to change. So God in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12, the Bible tells us that he's actually watching over his word to perform it. So we need to echo what God is saying. We need to get into the scriptures and say, what does the scripture say about our health? What does the word of God say about our families? What does the word of God say about our finances? What does the word of God say about our nation? We need to get into the scriptures. If there's something we're seeing that we don't like, we need to get into the word of God and say, Lord, what are you saying in your word about this situation? And begin to confess the word of God. And the moment we begin to speak the word of God, God will begin to watch over his word to perform it. The moment that word goes, it will not return unto him void. It will accomplish that which has been, it has been said to do. God's word never returns to him void. It does everything that it has been sent to him to do. So I want to encourage you. It is time today that we pray and ask God to abort every seed that we have ever sowed that is not good. We need to pray and say, God, if every any word we have spoken that does not honor you, that does not glorify you, we need to cancel those words in the name of Jesus. Many times the negative things that happens in our lives is because of the, com the confessions that we have released. Not even so much because of the enemy, but it's because of the confessions that we have released. And so we need to understand that God is speaking to us to hold fast to the confession. Once we begin to confess, hold fast to the confession of faith. Listen to this, verse 14 of Hebrews chapter 4. Seeing then that we have a high priest who has passed from he uh, through the heavens, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet he was without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Hold fast to your confession. Hold fast to your confession. 
Now, one of the things that tends to challenge our confession is our senses. The number one thing that challenges our confessions, many times, our thoughts and our senses. What's going on in our minds and what we are seeing. You've got to understand that you can't look at your, what, you know, when we talk about our senses, we're talking about our eyes, what we are seeing. Sometimes we can pray about a situation, walk out of our prayer room, and then what we see can be so negative, so opposite to what we have prayed for, and what we see can begin to move us and affect our confession. We are not to say what we see. We need to say what we want to see. Genesis chapter 1, and I'll preach this many times. The Bible says, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. When God looked at the earth, he saw chaos. He saw the earth was in complete chaos. Darkness was over the face of the deep. Everything was in a, in a total, in total disarray. God didn't say what he saw. He said what he wanted to see. He said, let there be light, and there was light. What God said, God saw. So we need to disconnect from our senses speaking what we see and begin to speak what we want to see we need to hold fast to our confession don't let your senses cause you to echo what you see don't say what you see say what you would like to see when the Jesus was in a storm, the Bible says there were the, the wind and the waves were all over the place. The disciples were reacting to the wind and the waves and the storm. But Jesus, when he got up, he said, peace, be still. He spoke what was opposite to what he was seeing and what the disciples were seeing. And the Bible says that the storm ceased and the peace of God came over that place. And the Bible says when they looked at him, they wondered what man of man this was. That he can even speak to the wind and to the waves. He didn't say what he saw. He didn't say how terrible, look at this horrible weather. How are we going to get to the place where we are going? No, he said, peace, be still. Hold fast to your confession. Hold fast to your confession. And let me just say this. When you hold fast to your confession, you will see that God will begin to work with the words that are coming out of your mouth. You'll see God will begin to, because you've got to understand, once you have confessed and Jesus is taking your confession before God, because he's the high priest of our confession, while we are still here, we need to continue to hang on to our confession until we see whatever we are praying for, whatever we are believing God for has come to pass. So if you don't like what the prime minister is doing, if you don't like, you know, some people are saying they need to open up everything. Some people are saying they need to shut everything down. You know, Christians tend to have a lot of opinions, but we need to say to the Lord, Lord, what are you saying? And let us begin to speak wisdom of our prime minister. Begin to say our prime minister is spiritually sensitive. He's going to hear from God. He's a Christian. He loves the Lord. God, cover him, protect him. Let him not be swayed to the left or to the right. And as we begin Begin to speak this over his life and close our eyes to all the negative reporting and the negative uh, people who are posting things and the negativity that's out there. Then God will begin to cause everything we're confessing to come to pass. So it says, seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed from the heavens, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. Now, this is something that really blessed me. Uh, Romans chapter 4, uh, verse 17. Romans 4, 17. The Bible says, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. God calls those things that do not exist, those things which are not as though they are. And let me add this, until they become. Now listen to this. It says, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. When he was speaking this to Abraham, he was speaking this to Abraham in his presence. He was speaking. Abraham was in his presence. And he says to Abraham, he says to Abraham, I have made you a father of many nations. This is a prophetic declaration that God gives a man who doesn't have any kids by that time. 
And he says, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him who, whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. In other words, he gives life to the dead. And how does he do that? By calling those things which are not as though they are until they become. Confession is how we can move from death to life. There are certain things that may have died in your life, your vision, your, 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 you know, your, your ambition, your business, your family, whatever it is that the enemy may have tried to come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. You can give it life, whatever it is that the enemy is trying to steal. You can cause life to come back to it through faith and through confession. And you've got to understand, when God spoke this to Abraham, the first thing he did to make sure that they're confessing this every day is that he changed his name. He said, your name will not be Abraham anymore, it shall be Abraham. And he said, your wife's name will not be Sarai anymore, but will be Sarah. Abraham means father of many nations. So every time they called each other, they were making confession. They were confessing. And you know what? God is the high priest of our confession. God was every time they would confess it. Every time they would confess it. Life was coming. Life was being released. Though physically they were deteriorated. They already went past the age of productivity. You know, Sarah could not produce any children. It doesn't matter if you've gone beyond the age of productivity if you feel like your season has passed your time has passed let me tell you you can change your circumstance by your confession what comes out of your mouth you may say well i wish i could go back to school and study this why did i waste my time with studying that thing now you know it's too late no it's not too late you can change things around by the confession that comes out of your mouth you got to change it. you got to change it. And let me just say this. The moment you change it, God begins to create your reality. God begins to create your reality. So God begins to change their names. He's the one that gives life to the dead. Some things you may look, you may think this is impossible. When we talk about giving life to the dead, we're talking about impossible things. The impossible becomes possible whenever we begin to call those things which be not as though they are. And let me just add this. Until they become. Hold fast to your confession. Keep speaking it until it comes to pass. Keep hanging on to it. Don't give up. Don't give in. Keep speaking. Verse 18 of Romans chapter 4. It says, who contrary to hope, in hope, believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken. You hear that? According to what was spoken. It will come to pass according to what was spoken. Not what was prayed, but what was spoken. So shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old. And the deadness of Sarah's womb. Verse 20, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced, fully convinced that what he has promised, he is also able to perform it. This is the definition of what faith is. What is faith? Faith is to be fully convinced. I know we like to use um, the other definition. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence. That is what faith does. The, the, what faith really is, the definition of faith, you find it in Romans chapter 4, verse 21. And it says, and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was able to perform it. Faith is to be fully convinced that what God has said, he is able to bring it to pass. And therefore, it was accounted to him for righteousness. It was accounted to him for righteousness. Now, let me just say this. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 to 10. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The Bible tells us, and therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness. Why was it accounted to him for righteousness? Because he believed. 
When you believe, you, are, you come into the place of righteousness. The righteousness, the place of righteousness, a place or a position where God can release a blessing in your life. We need to pray from the place of righteousness. He will grant you the desires of your heart from the place of righteousness. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much or makes much available. So righteousness is an important thing. But once you've come to the place of righteousness through believing, you have got to confess. Because confession is made unto salvation. The word salvation, from where we get the word salvage, whatever's been lost can be recovered. It can be salvaged again through confession. So whatever it is you've lost, once you're positioned yourself in God, you're in a place of righteousness, then open your mouth and begin to confess. Begin to confess. So salvation happens when we believe with our heart and then confess with our mouths. Many times whenever we use, we quote this scripture, if two of you shall touch and agree, it shall be done for you by my Father which is in heaven. We've used that scripture to talk about two individuals getting together, holding hands and praying. But let me give you this revelation for you to consider. If two of you shall touch and agree, sometimes your mouth has to be in agreement with your heart. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, Many times we can believe in our heart one thing and confess with our mouth something else. And you find there is disagreement without, within one person. And so we need to come to that place of agreement within ourselves, whereby our heart and our mouth are in agreement. If two shall touch and agree concerning anything, if I believe in my heart, and confess with my mouth, something will begin to shift. Something will begin to change. The Bible tells us that he was in a place of righteousness because he accounted to him. Who, uh, the Bible says he believed him who had promised. He did not waver in unbelief. He did not consider his senses. You see, he was over 100 years old. He was about 100 years old. His wife, Sarah, was already past the age of bearing children. He refused to listen to his senses. He refused to listen to his eyes, his his eyes would not steal his confession. He held fast to the confession that he was, he was holding. Don't le let your senses, whether it's what you see, what you hear, what you feel, cause you to, to, to lose your miracle by changing your confession. Be careful about your senses. He did not look. And the Bible says he never wavered. He never considered the deadness of Sarah's womb or the fact that he was old. He never allowed his senses to change his confession. He helped us to the confession of faith that he had. Every day he would call Sarah. She was confessing. Every day Sarah would call him. They were both confessing and speaking that God is able to do that which he has spoken. He's not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should confess, that he should repent. And he said he kept on confessing and speaking that until it began to come to pass. You have to sometimes make a decision. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I hear. I'm not moved by what I feel. By his stripes, you were healed. Past tense. Now you may feel a bit of pain. You may feel like your knees have got issues. Your back's got issues. Your, your, your health is not feeling well. Don't be moved by what you feel. Be moved by what you believe. Be moved by what you believe. Hang on to your confession of faith. If Jesus said you're healed, you are healed. Don't... I love what, what Smith was what said. He said, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what, by, by what I feel. I am moved by what I believe. And we need to come to that place where we are moved only by what we believe. Not moved by what we see, not moved by what we feel, but we move by what we believe. The Bible says, and Isaac sowed in the land. Now, what did he see? There was farming. The sky was blue. There was no rain. I mean, it, the ground was all cracked. That's what he was seeing. What was he hearing? Everybody was talking about the hardships. Oh, crop failure. Everything is going down. The economy. All this stuff is happening. This is what he was hearing. Hearing. But then God said to him, don't go down to Egypt, but stay in the land and sow in the land. And I can believe the moment he took seed, which he had paid money for, took that seed to go put into the ground. He could have lost that entire harvest if he had been going by what he was seeing or going by what he was hearing. But he chose to go by what God said. 
And when he responded to the word of the Lord, the Bible says God was able to produce miracle. In other words, that ground which was barren and dead and dry and cracked was able to produce not just 30 fold or 60 fold, but a hundred fold. Why? Because God calls those things that be not as though they are until they become. Can you imagine the barrenness of, of Sarah's womb? When that seed hit the barrenness of Sarah's womb, there was production, there was fruit, there was this conception that began to take place she became pregnant because what God said of the, of the of the confession that they had been confessing for 25 years was now coming to pass so let me just say this it's not about the condition of the ground it's not about the condition of the weather it's not about the economic condition it's all about our confession if we respond to the word of the Lord what the Lord is saying and begin to sow seed even in the time of famine not because of what we see or what we hear but because of what the Lord has said, let me just say this, you will see fruit. Your Isaac is going to come. Isaac means laughter. God will begin to release a blessing over your life. He's going to begin to release a blessing over your ministry, over your family. So I know during these times of difficulty, where all our senses are bombarded by news and media and, and social media and, and, and CNN and, 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 you know, of Channel 8 and Channel, Channel 9 and Channel 7 and, and SBS and all this, we are so bombarded by all this negative stuff and we can so easily begin to regurgitate and confess and speak what we have been seeing. But I feel this, this morning that the Lord is speaking to us that we need to disconnect from our senses senses. We need to disconnect from our senses and connect with our faith, with our spirit, and begin to call those things that be not as though they are. So let me just say this. During this time, you're going to see God's blessing over your life. During this time, I know everybody's saying these are the worst of the worst days, but these are the best of the best days. The hand of God is over those who right now will begin to speak life. God is going to cause things to begin to turn around even in your life. The Bible tells us, and I, and I want us to read this. This is going to bless somebody. Hebrews chapter, chapter 10. It says, therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Hebrews 10 verse 19. If you have your Bibles, Hebrews 10 19. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. This is those who have been born again. Those who've been washed by the blood, they can enter into the Holy of Holies because of the blood. And by a new and a living way which he consecrated for us through the veil, that is his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. God is speaking that we need to be washed. We need to remove every influence of the world, every negative. When we come before God by the blood of the Lamb into the Holy of Holies, we can't come in having been bombarded and covered with all the negativity of the world before the presence of God. But we need to allow our conscience to be cleansed and our bodies to be washed and purified. When we talk about our bodies, we're talking about the last of the flesh, the last of the eyes, and the pride of life. You see, whenever the enemy tries to attack, he attacks us in the area of our flesh. And so we need to go before God and say, God, I'm not going to allow my flesh to speak to me when I go before you. My flesh is saying this, but I'm going to going to speak what my flesh is saying when I'm coming before you by the blood of the Lamb. He says, therefore, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus and by a new and a living way which he consecrated for us to the veil that is his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God is our high priest. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. And our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. He who promised is faithful. Verse 24. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. 
for not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another so much the more that you see the day approaching. So whenever we come before the Lord, Having our conscience washed, we've come before the Lord because our hearts are now full of the word. Remember, he's watching over his word to perform it. We can't go before God with what CNN has said and what Fox News has said and what Channel 9 has said and what Channel 7 has said and what SBS has said and what that politician and this politician has said. We need to come before God with what God has said because he's only watching his word to perform it. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 14, and I'm going to be bringing this to a close. A man will be satisfied with, the, with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hand will be rendered to him. A man will be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. So God is speaking to us and saying to us that if you want good in your life, Good will only come when your mouth begins to speak good. A man will be satisfied with good by the fruit of his, of, of his mouth. So if you want to see good things come to you, think about it. What, do you want, what good thing do you want to see coming to you this year? What good things? You want to pay off your house? You want to, you want to, you want to you know, be able to get out of your house and, and go out for missions? You want to do stuff for the kingdom? What good things? The Bible says no good thing will leave withhold from those who love him. He will not withhold a good thing from you. But how do we get to these good things? Confession. A man will be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. And the recompense of a man's hands will be rendered to him. That means that even the works of your hands will be influenced by what comes out of your mouth. So when you wake up in the morning, you wake up like a champion. You begin to speak over your life that today I'm going to win. I'm not waking up to fail. I'm not waking up to lose. I'm not waking up to come last. Today, I'm going to win. I'm going to be on top. I'm going to break records today. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, I'm going to go places I've never gone before. The, today, I'm going to mount up with wings. I'm going to go to levels I've never reached before. I'm going to surpass yesterday. If I saw good things yesterday, today, I'm going to see even better things. You're going to begin to confess this and speak this over your day. You're going to command your morning. You're going to speak over your day from morning. Command your morning. This is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it begin to speak over your morning set your day by what comes out of your mouth a man will be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth and the recompense of a man's hand will be rendered to him Proverbs 18 20 a man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth if you're hungry for some things what are you hungry for what are you hungry for what causes you to, I mean, you, you, can, you can have an appetite. You can be hungry for a lot of things. Some people are hungry for success. You want to be successful with whatever it is that God's called you to do. I'm hungry for success. I want everything that I touch for God to bless it. And I pray that you're hungry for success as well. You are hungry for holiness. You're hungry for the things that, that for, for, for righteousness. You're hungry to see God use you in a powerful way. You're hungry to see miracles, signs and wonders. You're hungry to see people, hand, you know, to see hands being laid on people and blind eyes being opened you you gotta be hungry you're gonna be hungry and let me just say this your hunger the thing that the, the, the thing that is missing in your life god he says a man's stomach shall be satisfied by the fruit of his mouth the fruit of his mouth what's coming out of your mouth now i like the word when it says fruit because fruit comes from seed the bible says the sower sowed the word he sowed some seeds. He sowed some seeds. Those seeds will produce fruit. Seed, time, and harvest. And you're going to sow the seed of the word. You're going to keep watering that word with confession every day. Confession. Until that seed dies and then it begins to sprout. Until one day you begin to see the fruit. You, you got to understand when we talk about fruit, we're not talking about I'm saying it now, it happens now. Sometimes it may take a while because, before you begin to see the fruit. It took Abraham a while before he began to see things turn around in his life. So a man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth and from the produce of his lips he shall be filled. What are you empty with? 
with the produce. This is some amazing verses. And from the produce of his lips, he shall be filled. So whatever you're lacking in your life, it's in your mouth. Whatever it is that you're lacking in your mouth, in your life, whatever need you have, whatever situation you found yourself in, it is in your mouth. The miracle is in your mouth. The miracle is in your mouth. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. And you've got to ignore your senses when you're making these confessions. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I see. I mean, you may click on your bank account and zero, zero, zero. You know, you can't be moved by what you see. You better begin to speak and say, no, I am blessed of the Lord. I am blessed in the city, blessed in the field. And as you begin to speak and confess, let me just say this. God is speaking to us through his word, Proverbs 18, 20. It says, from the produce of his lips, he shall be filled. So wherever you're empty, where you've got your, 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 your tank is empty, and you want God to fill it. Whatever area of your life, I don't care what it may be. You can always speak life into those areas. You can speak life. Speak life. You'll find that people who don't even like you, the more you tell them you love them, you will see. Not only will your heart begin, even when you don't feel love, you just say, you know what, I love you. I love the prime minister. I love this guy. I love that. You, the moment you begin to speak love, your words begin to sow seeds of love. You'll find that your emotions will begin to change. We don't just say what we feel. We say we got to speak the word. I may not be out. You may feel angry. You may be upset by what you've seen, by what's going on. Jesus on the cross said, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. He didn't, I mean, he was in pain, but he spoke what he wanted to see. And you know what? God began to release forgiveness at that time. The grace of God began to be released. We cannot be moved by our senses. We, the Bible says the just shall live by his faith. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. We need to disconnect from our senses and begin to connect to our faith. Let your faith be your compass as far as your life is concerned. Don't be moved by what you see. Now, let me finish with this. This is going to, um, Romans chapter 10. I'm going to look at verse 9 to verse 10. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus... And believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You will be saved. Verse 10. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Confession is made unto salvation. Confession is made unto salvation. Whichever area of your life you need God to salvage. You need God to save you. You need God to recondition you. You need God to pick you up and, and, and strip the old and, and bring you to a place where you're brand new. Any area of your life, you need restoration. Confession is made unto salvation. We've read this many times and we've heard it said, life and death power is in the tongue. Sometimes we blame the devil for things the devil didn't do. If we speak death, that's what's going to be released. But we need to speak life. We need to speak life. You know, one person came to me and said, you know, you guys, you know, you always confess, confess. They call it a blab it, grab it group. They said, all this is rubbish. I said to them, why don't you get up every morning and say, I have cancer, I have cancer. They said, no, I wouldn't say that. I said, why? I said, you believe the what I'm preaching. Because most people will not say the negative thing over their life. Or say your kids who get into an accident. You not even said, even those who criticize, they wouldn't even dare let that come out of their mouth. Because they know the power of words. And so you got to understand, there is power here. Even those who don't believe, they say, oh, well, we just, this is blabby, grabby group and word of faith movement and all that. Now, listen, there is power in what comes out of your mouth. Your own conscience will tell you that that's the truth. Amen. And so we need to come to that place where we realize that God can shift our situation, shift things around by what comes out of our mouth. So let's believe God. Let's trust God. When Jesus said, your daughter is not dead, like he said to Jairus, your daughter is not dead. She is only asleep. The truth was the daughter was dead. That's the reality. 
The truth is she'd passed away. Her heart had stopped beating. She was lying there as a corpse. Yet Jesus said, your daughter is not dead. Whose report will you believe? Your senses came and told you, don't bother the master. Your daughter is dead. The situation is beyond repair. It's already gone. It's, the divorce is coming through. You're not going to survive. You're not going to make through. Your business is not going to work out. But let me just say this. The report of the Lord is that your daughter is not dead. She's only asleep. She's only asleep. And you need to believe the report of the Lord. This man believed the report of the Lord. Even though fact said that the daughter was actually dead. He believed the report of the Lord. And you know what? When he turned around, he started walking with Jesus. He walked with Jesus. He didn't walk with those who came and told him that his daughter was dead. He took Peter, James, and John, and Jesus, and they walked together to that place. Walk with the word. Walk with the word. Disconnect from every negativity. Walk with the word. Stick with the word of God. And when you come into the situation, where your situation is lying there dead, the impossibility is there. Your Sarah is there, the deadness of the womb. When you walk into that situation, put out everything in your life that tells you otherwise. The Bible says he, she put, he put out all those people who are laughing when Jesus said she's not dead, she's only asleep. They started laughing, the mourners, and he put them all out. He put them all out. And I found out that sometimes we need to put certain things out of our lives if we're going to see the resurrection power of Jesus Christ come to pass. If we're going to see resurrection, remember, he's the one that causes the dead to live. How? By what comes out of his mouth. So Jesus began to confess that the child is not dead. The child is only asleep. The miracle began when Jesus confessed it. Not when he got there and said, because you've got to understand, when he got there, he didn't even pray. He just told her to get up. You can't say to dead people to get up. You can say to people who are asleep to get up. So you see, the situation lined up with his confession. By the time he got there, his confession had already gone ahead and changed the situation so that it was what he said. So he said to our child, get up. And the child, the Bible says, she sat up and like she was just walking up from her sleep. And you know what? She was alive. So you've got to learn to speak faith. Whose report will you believe? Whose report? Your senses may say one thing, but whose report will you believe? If we can have somebody on the keyboard, I'm going to close with this. When the sons of the prophet swung the axe, and the Bible says the axe head went and fell in the water and it went and landed at the bottom of that river. The prophet said to him, and who's the prophet? A prophet represents the word of the Lord. Because his job is to go before the Lord and come to the people and say, thus says the Lord. So he went to the prophet. Let me tell you, if you have an accent situation. The accent has fallen into the water. And he said, Alas, master, it was borrowed. And I don't know how to, to find recompense. I don't know how I'm going to pay for this. I don't know how I'm going to repay this. That accent was borrowed. And it has fallen in the river and has sunk all the way to the bottom. The Bible says he went to the prophet. The prophet represents the word of the Lord. So whenever you have an accent situation, go to the word. Go to the word. Ask God, God, what are you saying? What are you saying to me? What are you speaking to me about this situation? I'm not going to be moved by my fear. I'm not going to be moved by my anxiety. I'm not going to be moved by what I see or what I feel or what I've heard. I'm going to be moved by what you say. You know what the prophet said? The prophet said, take a stick. That stick represents the confession. Because it was everything opposite to the accent. The accent is made of iron. It sinks. But what is a stick? A stick floats. And let me just say this, make sure you take a stick. Your stick represents the confession. The prophet said, take the stick and put the stick on top of the water. And the Bible says when he put the stick on top of the water, the accent, the metal, that thing that was at the bottom of the river began to become lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter until it started to float, 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 until it got to a place where it was floating next to the stick. Let me just say this. The situation was now lining up with the confession. And then the prophet said, now reach out and pick the axe head. 
And the prophet reached out and he picked the accent. And let me just say this. Whatever is out of reach in your life, because when it was at the bottom of the river, it was out of reach. Whatever is out of reach in your life can be within reach if you learn to put a stick or a confession over that place. Don't say what you see. Say what you want to see. What is it in your life that is out of reach? You're thinking, I want this, but, but it's so out of reach. It's so out of reach. Can you believe that you can retire by 50? That you don't even have to work? You may think, well, uh, if I do the math, that's out of reach. It is within reach if you start to confess it early. You may be a few years till, till you get to 50. Begin to confess it. You may say, by the time I'm 55, I'm going to still confess. I'm going to be retired and I'm going to be well. I'm going to be set for life. Let me just say, the moment you begin to confess that which is out of reach, your mathematics may not add up. But the moment it comes out of your mouth, that which is out of reach will be within reach. You'll be able to pull it out. If you want to say, I want to be paid off, I want to be debt free in the next three years. Begin to confess it. Don't be moved by what's going on with your bank account. Don't be moved by your income and what's coming in. Begin to confess it. And I'm speaking about this because I know it weighs heavily in people's minds. Being in debt, there's nothing worse in this life than having debts. It robs you of your life, of, of, your, of your sense of freedom and robs you of your ability to enjoy your life. You become almost like a sense of being in prison. God wants you to be blessed in this regard. You can confess, you can say, whatever is out of reach, put that stick, begin to put that stick. And now, let the weak say, I'm strong. Let the poor say, I'm rich. And you know what? The axe said will begin to float. And it will line up with the stick. And that which was out of reach once will now be within reach. And you'll be able to reach out and bring it and be able to apprehend it. And I believe God is speaking to some of you this morning. And I know some of us this morning, we need to pray and ask God for crop failure because we've been sowing negative words. We've been speaking negative things over the atmosphere of our lives. We've been confessing negative things. You know, I, don't, I just can't do this. It's too hard. The moment that hap comes out of your mouth, your words has got creative ability. It's not too hard. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's what needs to come out of your mouth. No, nah, it's too hard, it's too difficult. Oh, I don't know if I can keep, keep, I keep doing No, you can. You can. You can run the race. You can cross the line. You don't need to give up. You don't need to give in. Don't speak defeat. Speak life. Speak life. Speak life. And you will see God will turn things around. I, need, I know we need to pray and we need to pray for crop failure. Every negative word that we have spoken. Remember the Bible tells us that we will give an account for every idle word. What is an idle word? An idle word is a word that's not working for you. It's sitting there. We're releasing idle words. Let these words which are idle, which are useless, we will give an account. We need to be very careful. We were created in the image and likeness of God. So Father, we pray right now for crop failure. In the name of Jesus. If your family doesn't serve the Lord, don't talk about how your family is lost and how your kids and uh, so back sleep. No, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I decree that and declare it in the name of Jesus. Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established of you. So Father, we decree and we make declarations this morning. That everything you have promised us, the promises of God, which are yea and amen, not maybe. God's promises are not campaign promises. They are yea and amen. That means they come to pass. Father, we thank you for the promises of God. That what you have said, you are able to do it. You say to Gideon, the sun will not go down before you have the victory. But the sun was starting to go down. They hadn't had victory. And Joshua, the Bible says, he lifted up the sword. And he said, sun stand in the valley of Agile. The Bible says the sun stood still. The Lord stopped the entire planet from revolving. That's because heaven and earth may pass away, but his word, will never pass away and anybody that agrees 
with the word of God. God will move the heavens and the earth to make sure the word comes to pass. Father, we pray for crop failure. Every negative word we've ever spoken. In the mighty name of Jesus, we cancel those words. Not just things we have said, but things that may have been said over us by people who don't, did not know better. Family members who said, oh, in our family, cancer goes through. No, in Jesus' name, cancer is not our portion. We cancel those words in the mighty name of Jesus. In our family, there is arthritis. No, we cancel that in the mighty name of Jesus. In our family, people die early. No, we cancel that in the name of Jesus. You shall live and not die to, to decree and declare the goodness of God in the land of the living. Father, we cancel every negative confession that has ever been spoken over our lives. And we thank you, Father, right now that we are releasing the word of the Lord over our lives. After we have prayed, teach us to confess because you are the high priest of our confession. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you would like to give your heart to the Lord, if you're not saved, if something about this message has touched your heart and, and, and caused you to feel that you need to make a change. Some of you, I don't know where you may be watching this from. Maybe some of you are not in a good place with the Lord. I want you to close your eyes right now. And I'm going to lead you in a prayer. It's a simple prayer of invitation. Remember the Bible says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be saved. So I want you to open your mouth and get ready to confess and to begin to speak this word. Say, Jesus, come into my life. Save my soul. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. Forgive me of my sins. From today... Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. Help me to live for you. Transform me, change me. I believe you're the Son of God. I believe that you came from heaven to earth. I believe that you died on the cross. I believe that you rose from the dead. I believe that you're coming again. And because you died for me, help me to live for you all the days of my life in Jesus mighty and holy name if you've said that prayer for the first time Jesus has just come into your life Jesus has just come into your heart you're now born again he has been standing at the door of your heart and knocking and he as you've prayed that prayer you've opened the doors of your heart and let me tell you he's coming in to dine with you and you with him your life will never be the same again from today I want you to connect with us Leave us a, a note, send us a message on our Facebook or, or, or on our YouTube uh, channel. You can leave a comment and we will endeavor to reach out to you and connect with you. And uh, when all this stuff is over and done with, find a good church to connect with and, and be connected. And, and until then, connect with the word of the Lord. Connect with us as we continue to, sh to feed you and, and to share with you through uh, the vehicle of Facebook or, or, or uh, YouTube. And uh, we thank God for your life. Father, I thank you for your people. I pray a blessing over them this week that you would watch over them. I pray that you will cover them, that you would anoint them, that Lord Jesus, you will go before them. I pray that you'll cause your light to shine upon them in the mighty name of Jesus. Break every chain in their lives. And I pray that this week, Lord, that you will keep your inheritance safe. Keep your people safe, oh God. I pray the benediction over them that, Lord, you will watch over them. Cover them, protect them from every sickness, every disease, and every attack of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank you that surely goodness and mercy shall follow them all the days of their lives. And they will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen and amen. We love you with the love of the Lord. We pray that you have an awesome week. Connect with us again here on social media. Give us a like and, and subscribe to our channel if you can. And also share broadcast on Facebook if you get an opportunity. I know it's going to be a blessing to many. God bless you from here at Victory Life Toowoomba. We love you church family and we pray that you have an awesome week in the presence of the Lord in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Shalom.